Hi, I'm Alex, and welcome to Super Make Something, the show where I make something cool and show you how to make it too. Today, we'll be building a CNC cigar box guitar. Let's get started. Let's begin with the brief history of the cigar box guitar. Cigar box guitars have their roots in the mid-1800s, but became widely popular in the rural American South during the Great Depression. Without money to purchase guitars, people resorted to making instruments out of common everyday items. As their name implies, these guitars were often made of cigar boxes. One-string cigar box guitars, called diddly bows, also used broomstick handles and steel broom wire in their construction. Like modern guitars, diddly bows have three main components. A body, or sound box, which amplifies the guitar's sound, a neck to which the guitar strings are attached, and a bridge which supports the strings and transmits their vibrations to the body when they are plucked. Since I did not have a cigar box for this build, this guitar's sound box is made out of a custom-designed wooden box. Homemade wooden boxes are common woodworking projects, and many box-making tutorials can be found online. The specific box is designed using computer-aided drafting, or CAD software, which is used by engineers to quickly and easily design components for manufacturing. CAD software is used to create virtual 3D models of each component, which are then exported as drawings that describe how each part is supposed to be manufactured. Each side of the box has tabs and slots that interlock during the final assembly, which makes gluing the box easier. A hole is located at each box end to accommodate the guitar's neck, and a larger hole, called the sound hole, is located on the top of the box, which projects the sound from the body when the guitar is played. The guitar body parts are cut from 8th inch Lewin plywood, purchased from a local hardware store using a Shapoko 2 CNC machine. CNC, or Computer Numerical Control Machines, are automated manufacturing tools that use a programming language called G-Code to move a spinning cutting tool or end mill through raw material in order to cut out parts designed in the CAD software. The G-Code instructs the machine how to move the end mill through the raw material using a series of waypoints. While G-Code can be written by hand, it is most commonly automatically generated using computer-aided manufacturing or CAM software. Several free CAM software packages exist which can be found online. Since six sides need to be cut to make the box, the cutting process can take a while. These shots of the Shapoku 2 in action are sped up, so be sure to grab your favorite book before you begin the cutting process. Once all the parts have been cut out, it's time for some sanding. Using a combination of a palm sander and sandpaper, I smoothed out the edges and slots of all of the cut parts, removing any leftover burrs from the CNC operation. To improve the look of the wood by bringing out some of its interesting grain patterns, I next applied some Danish oil to the parts using a cheesecloth. This step is completely optional, but if you decide to do this as well, make sure to apply your finish in a well-ventilated area. Once all of the parts are stained to your liking, set them out to dry for a few hours. When all of your parts have dried, it's time to assemble the sound box. Apply a generous amount of PVA glue to each of the tabs and slide the components into each other. During assembly, make sure that the neck hole on the front and back of the box line up. I chose to locate the neck holes on the side furthest away from the sound hole, as this will hide the screws needed to hold the neck in place once everything is assembled. Wipe off any excess glue leaking around the tabs, and clamp everything together. While the sound box is drying, assemble the guitar's neck out of a broomstick. Measure a distance of 36 inches from one end of the broomstick and cut through the broomstick at this location using a saw. To avoid splinters while playing the guitar, use a hand file to smooth out the edge you just cut. Carefully drill a small pilot hole at one end of the broomstick. This hole will help align the screw to which the guitar's string will be attached. Drill two larger holes approximately one inch apart at the other end of the broomstick, trying your best to keep the holes on each side of the broomstick parallel. Once the box is dried, slide the broomstick through the holes at each end of the box. Then, drill two pilot holes through both the face of the box and the broomstick, followed by two screws. These screws hold the neck in place relative to the sound box. Next, insert a screw into the pilot hole you drilled earlier at the end of the broomstick. Breaking from tradition, this cigar box guitar uses an acoustic guitar string instead of a steel broom wire. Packages of guitar strings can be purchased from your local music store for a few dollars, which provides you with six different strings for your diddly bow. Pick the string corresponding to the key you would like your diddly bow to play in, and tie one end of the string to the screw on the bottom of the neck. The holes on the other side of the neck will be used to mount the tuning peg hardware to tension the guitar string after assembly. First, slide a hose clamp over the top end of the broomstick past the two holes you drilled previously. Tighten the clamp with a screwdriver making sure that the center of the hose clamp bolt is aligned with the two holes. The guitar's tuning peg is constructed out of a thumb screw, a washer, a wing nut, and a hex nut. Thread the hex nut over the thumb screw followed by the washer. Insert the thumb screw into the hole closest to the top of the broomstick so that the spade end of the thumb 
thumb screw is on the opposite side of the hose clamp bolt. Next, thread the wing nut onto the thumb screw but do not tighten it down all the way yet. Take the loose end of the guitar string and thread it over the body, across the hose clamp bolt, into the bottom of the two holes at the top of the broomstick. Then, tightly wrap the guitar string around the thumb screw. The goal is to wrap the guitar string around the thumb screw tight enough so that additional tension can be applied to the string by turning the thumb screw. Once the guitar string is sufficiently wrapped, tighten the thumb screw as much as possible while holding the wing nut with your other hand. A significant amount of tension should now exist in the guitar string. The final step is to add the bridge. The bridge can be any object that adds enough vertical clearance to the string so that it does not collide with the sound box when the string is strummed. I found that this plastic bottle of old whiteout provided the perfect amount of spacing for my guitar. Slide the bridge underneath the string, wedging it between the string and the guitar body. That's it. You now have your very own cigar box guitar or diddly bow. The best way to play a diddly bow is a guitar slide like this one here. If you don't have a slide, you could also use a socket head from a wrench or even a spoon. Anything will work as long as it will allow you to slide your fingers smoothly across the string. Well, that's all there is to this project. See you next time. Now go super make something. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button and share it with your friends. Your support helps me make more videos. To keep up with the latest episodes, click the subscribe button below. You can also check out all of my other videos by clicking on the video to the right, and follow me on Twitter at SuperMakeSMTHNG. See you next time! Now go Super Make Something!